Welcome to this short introductory video to histopathology. We're going to start by asking the simple question, what is histopathology? Histopathology is a discipline of histology, the microscopic study of normal tissue, concerned with producing accurate diagnostic information from patient tissue samples. Today we're going to take you through the sequence of preparing a sample for analysis under the microscope. Here's the histology sequence. Let's start with surgical removal. Surgical removal of tissue is normally carried out by a surgeon who submits biopsies or surgical specimens to the histopathology lab for a diagnosis. After tissue biopsy, timely fixation is essential in order to kill tissue and prevent degradation via autolysis. Normally, the surgeon does this upon removal, but sometimes the sample is dissected and sampled in a fresh state. Whether fresh or fixed tissue is used depends on the test to be performed or the preference of the institution. The example shown in this video is of a fresh sample, so we're going to skip forward a step in our histology sequence to cut up. Cut up refers to sectioning of the macroscopic specimen so it may be placed into specially designed cassettes for processing. Small samples are often placed directly into these cassettes, bisected or trimmed. This task is up to the surgical pathology cutter who will identify anatomical landmarks for correct specimen orientation so appropriate sections can be taken. A perpendicular section shows how close a mass is to the margin, while parallel sections are used when the margin appears widely free of the area of interest. To maximise the amount of information that can be obtained from a tissue section, different areas of the specimen are sampled as opposed to random, indiscriminate sampling. Before sectioning, various inks and powders can be used to mark margins and critical points on the specimen. Seen here is an orange specimen being coated in India ink. Sections of no larger than 3mm in thickness can now be cut and placed into a labelled cassette. The cassette is then submerged in an appropriate fixative, bringing us to the next step in our histology sequence. Fixation alters tissue by stabilisation of protein to resist further change. Fixation works by converting tissue from soluble to insoluble, preventing loss during the processing stage. The main functions of fixatives are to kill tissue, preventing autolysis, to maintain structure, and to bring out refractive indexes to increase visibility and contrast. There are several types of fixatives, including additives, where the fixative combines with the tissue proteins, making them insoluble, non-additives, organic compounds that act on the tissue without chemically combining with it, coagulants that create a mesh ball-like tissue network that allows solutions to more easily penetrate the section, and non-coagulants. These create a gelatinous environment, making it more difficult for subsequent solutions to penetrate the tissue. Many factors influence fixation, such as tissue size, the osmolarity of the fixative, the pH of the fixative, temperature, time, including delay from surgical removal to fixation, and duration of fixation, the type of fixative, and the tissue to fixative volume ratio. Now let's go through an example of a popular fixative, formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a colourless gas often obtained as a 37 to 40% solution in water. This is known as formalin. 10% formalin is one of the most commonly used fixatives in the lab. Formalin is a non-coagulant additive that penetrates tissue rapidly but fixes slowly. Other fixatives include glutaraldehyde, alcohol and osmium tetroxide. Each have different properties that make them suitable for different uses. This brings us to the next step in the sequence, processing. The aim of processing is to prepare your tissue in a support medium such as paraffin wax so that very thin sections can be cut in order to observe individual cells under the microscope. The three main principles of processing are dehydration, clearing and infiltration. During dehydration, denatured alcohol and ethanol are used in increasing concentrations to remove water and fixatives. Once the tissue is dehydrated, xylene, an intermediary agent, is used to clear the tissue as it is miscible with both alcohol and paraffin wax. During infiltration, paraffin wax is pumped into the tissue to act as a support medium. The fluids are pumped in and out of the processing unit in a controlled manner for correct temperature, pressure and fluid circulation. 
Processing of tissue is done either in a short cycle for tissues up to 2 mm thick or an overnight cycle for thicker, denser or fattier tissue. The number of cycles is often the same for both, however the length of time the tissue is exposed to each fluid is what differs between cycles. Typical processing cycles might look like this. Notice how the cycle times are much longer for the overnight cycle. Processing times can be reduced by heat, agitation, low viscosity of fluids and decreased pressure. Once processing takes place, the tissue is moved to the next step, embedding. Embedding is a process whereby tissue is secured in a wax mould in order for it to be correctly orientated for microtomy. The tissue is placed in the appropriate cassette at the correct orientation before being flooded with paraffin wax and transferred to a cold plate to solidify. Now we've secured our sections in paraffin wax, it's time to use the microtome. Microtomy is a method of cutting thin sections of tissue and mounting on a glass slide in order to view it under the microscope. A rotary microtome is able to cut sections of hardened paraffin wax containing the embedded tissue so thin that light is able to pass through it. It has a screw thread that advances the block toward the blade by 3 to 6 microns per rotation. The paraffin block must be very cold in order to be cut correctly. Once cut, a ribbon of sections is floated onto a water bath. Glass slides are able to pick up each individual section and are dried on a hot plate or incubator before moving on to the next stage, staining. Staining refers to the process of staining tissue on a glass slide with a dye in order to make the cell structure visible, to show variation in these structures, and to indicate the chemical nature of the tissue elements. There are many different staining methods that can be used, however, most stains are water-based and at this stage the tissue is embedded in wax. To remove the wax, xylin is used in a process known as de-waxing. Because water and xylin are immiscible, ethanol is used to remove the xylin and the slide can now be taken to water. This process is known as hydration. Now the slide is ready to be stained. One of the most commonly used stains is hematoxylin and eosin, or H&E. The hematoxylin stains the cell nuclei blue to purple, and the eosin stains other cellular components varying shades of pink. This enables the histopathologist to observe several different tissue structures and gives a good balance between nuclear detail and other structures. A H&E stain is usually sufficient for the histopathologist to make a diagnosis. However, other stains may be required. Some more specialised stains include the periodic acid shift stain, Alcyon blue, and Masson's trichome stain. Once the stain is complete, the section needs to be dehydrated with ethanol and cleared using xylene so a cover slip can be applied using DPX, a solution that is immiscible with water. Slides are now ready to be examined under the microscope by the histopathologist and a diagnosis can now be reached. We hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to histopathology and thank you for watching.